Hello and welcome to Heiser Media's coverage of the 2023 MindKill Disc Golf Championship. As always, we'd like to thank our presenting sponsors for making the disc coverage possible. Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Reaper Disc Supply. I'm Nathan Johnson. Today I'm joined in the booth by Dan Brooks-Wells. How's it going, Dan? Hey man, going good. How you doing? Not too bad. Excited to watch this exciting final round of the tournament. Yeah, we got a really cool course uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere and you can see our leaderboard right here. We got Harry Chase in first with Neg 16, Paul Kranz, Neg 13, Zachary Tassone. And uh, we all know Harry. Harry's a young gun. He's from Rhode Island, but he's been in Philly uh, for the past few years. In second place, I believe a lot of people know Paul Kranz. Uh, he's at Neg 13 with a 1036 first rated round. He's from Massachusetts. Zachary Tassone at Neg 12. He's from Princeton, New Jersey at 990 rating. Uh, that might have gone up recently. And in fourth place, Craig Cutler at nine from West Milford, New Jersey. We don't know Craig. Uh, he is, he's been around for a long time, goes back and forth with Steve Brinster. So as we're coming up to the first hole, hole one, it is a par four, 692 feet. Um, there's a lot of OB to the left and kind of long and before the basket, but really what you're looking to do is chip up a shot before this long OB, and then it's really just a hyzer or a straight shot up to this basket on the hill. So on the first shot, don't go left. Hey, the on the card of the shot, right. 23, right. Mike right. killed the Skull Championship. First of the box, Harry Chase. Harry Chase here leading off, like you said, super exciting player to watch. It'll be really great to watch him throw some bombs on this pretty open course. Yeah, and these these guys, like this first shot, it's really just a stock hyzer for them. So it's a nice shot to like, you know, when you walk up for the first tee, you have nerves. You just throw a hyzer out and let it land where it lands. Yeah, hopefully get your round started moving in the right direction. Next up, Paul Kranz! Yeah, as you said, Paul Kranz, now a household name after winning the AM World Championships in, I believe, last year, 2022. So mm -hmm. now on the pro scene, looking to, to make some moves. Yeah, we've seen him traveling a lot this year. Very similar to what Harry did. Yeah. Harry Chase here with his first tee shot. making the trip up from New Jersey. Here for this tournament and I think both of us have played with him quite a few times tends to play a lot of tournaments in Pennsylvania where we're from so it'd be good to watch him out here on this coverage as well yeah Zach Zach's got some game he kind of pulls over on this one too much but all right. yeah I've never seen Craig play before so this will be new for me but been around the game for quite a while so I'm sure it'll be a fun watch yeah I've had the pleasure of playing with Craig uh, for a couple years now and he doesn't throw as far as these guys, but he throws just as accurate and he makes a lot of putts So be fun to watch him Yeah, nice smooth controlled drive right there puts it in the middle of the fair right. Sets him up for a good start on hole one Yeah, it seems like uh, Zach is gonna go with the flick into the green the way the green is sloped It's gonna kind of stop his left to right movement. So Trying to get this in the circle somewhere Yeah, Zach's got a strong forehand and backhand so just looking to spike this one into the hill and yeah it Does a great Beautiful. job of that nice short birdie putt Yeah, it's 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 important to get to get close on this one, especially for your first putt of the day, a lot of people don't want to end up short, so they crank it really far past. Then they end up having like a circle's edge, kind of a death putt looking back at the basket, but not Craig. Craig knows what he's doing. Yeah, it does a nice job, but the, the height and the distance control just kind of drives that into the hill. How far, Dan, do you think these, uh, these upshots are coming in at? Yeah, they're probably somewhere around 280 to 300 feet away, but since it's uphill, you know, uh, you got to put a little bit more on it, so maybe more like 350 power-wise. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not really scared to, to you know, of clearing the OB, but at the same time, yes, yeah, still still important to, to get that distance right 
don't want to leave yourself an uphill 30 footer on the first hole of the day right this is leaking a little Ooh, bit from harry sit i think oh wow that's just a lucky barely. break yeah. yeah good good break early for harry to just barely stay in bounds there on the left side of ob leaves himself a long putt he doesn't really want anything to do with it but i'm sure he's happy with the par after that that missed release on the upshot i'm actually surprised he didn't bid that maybe there's more wind than what we can see because it is flat behind where he was putting towards but yeah paul comes up a bit short yeah you can see that tree in the background moving a little bit so i'm sure there's some gusts going on but oh a nice putt there from zach yeah. to start off his run yeah, it's a good putt. Like I said, that can get you. Like, if he hits cage or if he airballs it, he's going at least 25 feet down the hill. Here's Craig. Let's see if he can connect there for the birdie, like you said. A very solid putter and a nice way to start off his round. Yeah, everybody getting a, a stroke on the leader to start the round, tighten things up a bit. Yeah, it definitely will make things exciting for us to watch. Good finish, good exciting finish here at this A tier. Moving on to hole two, sponsored by Reaper Disc Supply. This is a par three, not the longest one, 215 feet. This is a new addition, the elevated basket, uh, a new pin position from what I'm used to seeing as well. Uh, seems like it's just going to be a little chip hyzer around and make a, make a death putt, essentially, if you're not parked. Yeah, I might have to make a decision as these players approach the green, depending on where their, their drives land. Something like that, circle's edge, downhill. Might be, might be a layup. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, this pin used to be pushed back a little bit farther, a little bit trickier of a, a section. Maybe they got some feedback that uh, it wasn't the right position. So I like yeah, the I change. Mean, yeah. Nice shot there from Craig. Is not going to have a very uphill putt for his shot? I mean, this hole did still come in as the easiest hole in the course at a two. 2.67 average so but there were some some over par scores as well so maybe that uh you know elevated basket on the slope causing some uh some three putts potentially yeah. or just you know more decisions that need to be made on the green right and harry a little inside there he gives himself a safe putt at it but how high is that putt actually because it's not only an elevated basket it's like a severe drop off on that left side yeah, definitely going to be hard to line up. Definitely one of those putts you don't want to hit the cage because it's going to come right back to you. So, But, Paul, that is exactly what you want on this hole. Just a nice soft hyzer. Scoots it up on the green as we take another look. Yeah. So smooth. And you know, like, everybody who practiced this hole parked it during practice, and it just, it's just an easy, <laughs> yeah. easy little hyzer. And when you don't get it right, you're kicking yourself. Yeah, this is way uphill. Yeah, this is one of those you just got to aim for the band, or if not higher, and just kind of hope your disc drops in there. We'll see what Harry's able to do. Ah, just a bit high. Yeah, when, when you're that low, it really cuts off the angle, like how many chains you can actually see. Yeah, I would think Zach's got to give this a... No, it doesn't, doesn't oh, want any wow. piece of it. Too early, maybe? Maybe. I mean, it was a great opportunity to make up a stroke on Harry, but I guess he just, you know, if you're not feeling those putts, that's that's the best thing to do, right? Oh, no. Yeah, ab absolutely. That is, that's a shame. Yeah, uh, I I always teach people if you're not confident in your bid, you know, you're, you know, if you're not confident in the shot, you're not going to give it a confident bid, so you might as well lay it up, and that's okay. Yeah, not a bad decision. Here's Craig after the miss on his birdie look. Gets a bit of a roll away. See if he can make the correction here. Probably only about a 20-footer, but 10 feet straight uphill. 
Man. Folks, it's tougher than it looks. I guarantee it. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. That is a, a very steep putt. This one a little more level to clean up the bogey. He is able to connect there very nice. to stop the bleeding. But I mean, that's that's what the, the, the switch was made for, right? Make Absolutely. Make this hole a little stressful. No stress for Paul as he's going to tap into yeah. the birdie there after a great drive. Really rewarding the good shots and punishing those shots that, you know, on a normal open green, maybe a stress-free 25-footer here. You got to think about it a little more. Sure. And just like that, uh, we have another stroke on Harry uh, for Paul. Yeah, Paul definitely. And Zach. St very much still in it could go any oh, for sure. way all right hole three this is a par three sponsored by cosmic disc golf it is 284 feet uh you can choose the left route or the right route whether you want a backhand or flick it's really just a blind shot and uh you know you practice your hyzer you practice your distance this really shouldn't be a problem for most of these guys yeah, probably just a nice stable mid-range looks like paul's going MB3 on a soft little hyzer. Yep. Just absolutely pure as the gap. A little long, but he'll take that every day. Yeah, the only trouble I see people really get into is they just make, you know, they go a little short and you get into these pines, and it's pretty much a pitch out when you get into these thick pines. Zach opts for the wide forehand line, trying to show us the other Man. option. A little bit deep. That's going to be a low ceiling look see what he's got yeah there's there's a lot of room out to this right side um those trees that you see on the right are kind of pushed back a bit yeah just kind of a nice stock hyzer here he's looking to replicate paul's line nice. and then, yeah also leaks a little deep yeah see if these guys are throwing meds it seems like they should be throwing putters yeah i mean all the power in the world for for those two guys so it's almost this is almost one of those holes you can throw any disc in the bag just whatever you're most comfortable hitting that hitting the line right. hitting the angle with right and nice you can see craig there. yeah yeah he's a very good shot you can see him using uh kind of a faster disc but he really knows how to have touch with whatever disc he throws yeah, so let's see what zach's got here like we said kind of a low ceiling putt Woo! from right on the edge of the circle not a problem though nicely done yeah. fantastic I, you don't want to miss two and three yeah that's for sure three uh, like we said hole, hole two for easiest on the course hole three was the second easiest so yeah. definitely a must get birdie makes sense harry gets it get on himself on the board with the birdie there a nice little 27 footer yeah let's let's get harry's round rolling you know he wasn't able to connect on the first two, but it's early. He's got a little bit of a cushion, so. Yeah, plenty of time to build some momentum as Paul just mm -hmm. kind of leaks that one, maybe 25 feet or so, a little left. Just you don't expect him. Yeah, you don't expect him to miss those. I definitely don't want to be leaking strokes here. Final round of an eight here. You'd have to think every every stroke is going to count as we come down the stretch. Go, Craig. That's a good bounce back. Uh, unfortunate roll away on hole two. Doesn't let it get to him and uh, does what he needs to do on hole three. Yep, gets the stroke back and uh, see if he can get himself moving in the right direction. Absolutely. All right, hole four, sponsored by BS Upshots. This is a par four, 493 feet. You can see this area in the middle is OB. You can see the short basket uh, covered. That's where we're, you're really trying to land. And then it's just a little pitch up to the green, which is surrounded, or just OB on the left side. Uh, so a lot of OB. Some people lay up. Some people go for the short basket. But either way, you can still get to the long basket. Yeah, not the longest par four coming in sub 500 feet. So, you know, you just got to pick a, make a choice and, and commit to it. 
Is Zach looking up for the big Heiser forehand? Very nice. Leaks a little right, but that'll work just fine. Yeah, that's not a problem. I Zach forehands a lot. He's got a lot of power. I, I would say most people try to throw this flex line to get over, get over this OB. Does that die in too early? That's the trouble. Yeah, kind of. Kind of cut rolls that one. Maybe a little wind or maybe just a little overturned. Just doesn't quite have the distance to clear. So Craig, I think, might go with the chip shot up shot and clear it on the second. Yeah. So, de again, we don't see the wind. So depending on the wind, you know, maybe that's the smart play right there. Yeah, and I mean, even if that's a 200-foot shot, right, he's still got 300 or so into the pin, still very doable. Right. Nothing wrong with the layup play. Paul looks like he makes a correction off of Harry's line. This looks really great out of the hand. Might have the short yeah. basket in his way, honestly. Yeah. Never account for that during your practice rounds, I don't think. So Harry will go to the drop zone, and he's definitely trying to reach the green on this, but uh, there's danger to the left. Uh, towards the green, so he'll have to be careful of that. This has the height, but not quite. Just leaves it out a little wide. Drops down short. That's a putt. It's honestly the safer play, because if he if he ends up crashing that a little bit more left, he's easily testing the OB. Yeah, at least gives him a, himself a chance to save the par. So Craig is in a very similar spot where Harry just threw from going with that big hyzer. That's really well done. Yeah. He's going to like that. So I like I like the forehand in. You, you can kind of see in the green it slopes right to left, so the fore, you know, it'll kind of slow down the energy of the left to right movement. Perfect. Super smooth even gives it a little bit of a bid. That uphill slope behind the basket catches it nicely. Just a little chip shot for Paul as well. Yeah. Leaves himself a short birdie putt. Yeah. Pretty textbook way to play the hole from those two guys. Absolutely. So here's Harry to save his par. This seems like a big putt. You know, Paul's putting for a birdie. Wow. Wow. Yeah, right on the stripe. That's a big confidence builder right now if you're Harry. Just I to mean, kind of keep the momentum in your favor as much as you can. Yeah, stops the bleeding. No, I mean, he didn't bleed. <laughs> no bleeding. No, yeah, no bleeding <laughs> at all. Just going to lose maybe one stroke, if any, as Craig just a bit right there splashes out. Here's Paul. Same distance as his last putt. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean that's that's the yeah where I I'm shocked as as I think you are too Dan just maybe a little nerves yeah. just kind of not really committing maybe. that's two that he's missed on the left side maybe or you know so again I I know we keep talking about this wind but sometimes when the wind's blowing um it gets into your head sometimes you know if when you were mm -hmm. warming up they weren't dropping like you expected them to and yeah those twenty five footers become tough. But yeah. oh, for sure. Nice job by Zach, uh, taking the lead over Paul to get into second place with that bird. Yeah, now that putt from Harry looks even more important as he doesn't even lose any strokes to Paul there. Stays at 17. Absolutely. All right, hole five, sponsored by On Your Card. This is a very unique hole. It's one of my favorites on the course. It's 309 feet, and you can see it's on this like mound. So you can throw a flick, you can throw a backhand. It feels more like 350 to 360 feet. And uh, I don't see a lot of twos, uh, but it's definitely very doable. You can see how there's really not a lot of landing space up there. So you're trying to land a little bit in front of the basket and uh, dig it into the hill and have a short putt at it. Yeah, the short putt is definitely a pro. Super treacherous green, so I'm sure we'll see a lot of layups. Harry going for that kind of big turnover shot, but it just kind of stalls out a little bit. Ends up kind of just fading back down the hill, so that'll probably be a layup for him from there. 
Probably, yeah. You definitely want to turn it a little bit more than you think. Let's see, Craig. Craig. Throw, probably throwing something flippy here. Coming out. Yeah. yeah, his kind of does that same stall as well at the end of the flight. Right. But that'll give uh, him a putt. Yeah. Stuck it on the side of the hill. Seems like Paul is choosing a mid-range. This angle looks great. It's got to sit. Oh, that's a better shot for the long basket. Wow. wow. Yeah, way down there under that tree. Might be a tricky scramble. Just threw it too well. Oh, no. Sit. Okay. That's not a gimme. That's a tester putt. Yeah, definitely not, especially going to be certainly windy up on that top of that hill. Paul does find a little window to, to sneak a forehand out of, so that'll leave him with a short putt for par. Yeah. You can see, like, like gauging the distance here is weird because you don't want to be too short because it's way downhill, and you don't want to be too long because it just drops off. So, it's again, this hole is very unique, and it's really fun to play. Yeah, so here's Craig now, last chance at a birdie on the card. On the fifth, another uphill putt that he just leaves a bit high. Catches the nubs. Maybe a little bit of a headwind here. Yeah. I think it might have been a headwind. He's he's putting it a little low, expecting a lift. Just didn't get it. Yeah. Didn't quite get the nose up there. Kind of a weird follow through there for Paul, but he is able to find the bottom of the basket. It's a tough hole. I mean, hole five, it did play as the third hardest on the day at a 3.24 average. So a lot of danger on this green. If you yeah. get a little too aggressive, the bogey comes quick. And again, Paul is taking a stroke from Harry. And so is Zach. Yeah, I can have ourselves a two strokes separating the top three players right now. Got ourselves nice a ball game, folks. Absolutely. Happened very quick. All right, hole six, sponsored by Jersey Discs. This is a par four, 740 feet. I think one of the longer holes out here. You basically throw from the top of what you just threw to. Uh, there's a lot of OB. Um, it only comes into play if you turn your disc over, but you're throwing a hyzer into this landing zone. And there is the long basket position right there so you throw a hyzer in and you kind of have a tunnel to hit uh, for your second shot depending on where you land so one of the most fun tee shots to throw on the course I think because you just get to let it rip or I didn't even think of this layup just about to ask if anybody was considering the layup how, how about how far is it to clear that second landing so it's it's not that far I mean it's so downhill you know, Craig Craig doesn't throw as far as these other guys, and he's he's going for it. Um, that really needs a swing. You got it. It's the yeah, it gets the green flag. Yeah, I think Zach laid up because it's it just has to be really windy. So that's my only explanation for that. Most of the time, you're not even thinking about going to be short. Yeah, Paul, just no hesitation, going big hyzer. That's a good shot. Yeah, you want to land in between those pines to have a kind of another between pines shot at the basket. I'm sure Harry, after the slow start, looking to really take some frustration out on this disc, maybe. Oh, yeah. That's way up there. Really nice shot. So I'm guessing this is just a par play from Zach with the layup. I feel like it's a little too far to uh, try to get the birdie, but maybe he'll he'll try to prove me wrong here. Yeah, I, I believe that's a layup. That's a tough spot. He's going to have to figure out a way to work around that. Yeah, a lot of these kind of grabby pine trees on this course that 
you know, you really don't want to be under because those branches are quite annoying. AC yeah, Craig turned it over too much uh, into that pine as well. And I mean, you're going to try and lay up from there, but it's a really wide base tree. Yeah, I might have to get creative, maybe a, some sort of flick roller overhand situation from less than 100 feet. Paul kind of makes the same mistake, but he is able to sneak through. He's going to have a birdie putt. That was a really fortunate break there. Absolutely. And Harry is rewarded. He's had the farthest drive. He's rewarded with the easiest shot into the green, a little chip flick. I don't know, maybe not so much of a chip, but... Even he touches that pine. Everybody touched that pine tree. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, it is perfectly placed, really, as you approach that green, just to kind of grab errant shots. Like you said, Zach's got a tricky approach here. Probably about 200 feet or so. It looks good. Oh, yeah. Looks really good. Puts it under the basket. I'm sure he wouldn't have, well, you know, that's not how he drew up the par when he, he laid up off the tee, but... Definitely right. will not complain about the result. No. Here's Craig. He's trying to get... Look where his foot placement in is. He's trying to get as much space as he can to, to like, boomerang this disc around. Yeah, kind of a little air bounce spinner around the tree. Fortunate to not be directly behind it and have a little bit of an angle. Yeah. Harry kind of seemed tentative on that bid. That wasn't the usual strong... Yeah, never I'm really got it up. And if it had a nose angle. Yeah, def there's definitely some wind kind of gusting around out here. You saw Paul's just kind of flutter and lift a little bit there. Hits the top. Sleepy Card's kind of struggling to, to get the birdies. No real, like, big blow-up numbers per se, but no. not really connecting on those those tester putts, those moneymaker putts from 25 to 30 feet. We'll have a par frame to end hole six. Okay, hole seven, sponsored by Dark Side Disc Golf Dice. This is a par three, 365 feet. Uh, the play is to throw a huge hyzer around on the outside and spike it in if you have the power for it. If you don't, you have to test the trees up the middle. I don't see that play often, if ever. Um, so most people are just trying to throw the spike hyzer. Looks like that's what Zach's lining up. Yeah, you, you really got to push it left. So in my opinion, that has to be higher so it can kind of have the time to glide to the left. You kind of see out of the hand he was asking for it to get left. Just maybe a little wide, a little low. See if Craig can make an adjustment here. This looks much better. Yeah, now see if it pushes forward enough. Yeah. Well done. It looks inside the circle. Yeah, nice shot. All with Similar a good... height. Yep. Starting to swing. It'll work probably just outside the circle circle two maybe a bit of an uphill putt really got to commit to just barely missing that first tree on the left yeah that or just like crush whoa Your this leans is way enough. right where is it yeah yeah he he he's probably Maybe he hit the inside tree before, but he swung that way out um, and just caught the outside tree. Yeah, never had a chance really to get back towards the basket, so he's left with this kind of 100-foot half bid, just lays it up. But another opportunity for our chasers to grab a stroke. Zach's up first here. Whoa, Ooh, corner pocket. Sneaks, sneaks it in, low right. Wow, from circle two, that's a big one. That ties him for the lead temporarily. Yeah, you love to see those fall. Now and again, you throw a putt, you're just not sure whether or not it's going to go in. So that's always nice. Yeah, I'm sure he is feeling good about that one. Let's see if Paul can match. 
Another it's left side nice. miss for Paul. Yeah, just not quite committing. Craig as well. Yeah, the putting was continue here for our lead card. Just not quite feeling that, getting in that rhythm that you'd like to see. It's 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 kind of that point in the round where I'm a little worried, you know. Like if I'm these guys, it's like you know you miss a couple on the first maybe two or three holes, you know you you kind of bounce back. But seven holes in, still without really any putts made outside of 30 feet, except for that one from Zach, is uh, a little troublesome. Absolutely. All right, hole eight, sponsored by Tree Magnets. This is a par three, 290 feet. It is a tight tunnel off the start with about one or two trees to miss. And then you're just hyzer and out if you're right-handed. So goal number one, hit this initial tunnel. Hole eight, third easiest hole on the course at a 2.74 average. So definitely must get birdie for these guys. That'll putt. Yeah, normally I'd say that's that should be a birdie, but <laughs> we'll see oh, how, yeah. how it's gone this so far. Yeah, I think Zach has been the most consistent so far this round. Oh, all of a sudden, he's tied. Maybe I just missed it, but he's tied for the lead. Huh? Yeah, just kind of snuck his way up there. He's playing clean golf, giving himself birdie looks. and Yeah. Yeah, Harry's had a couple mistakes here and there. So It goes to show, like, you just... You make the putts you're supposed to make, and then one or two drop that are kind of outside your normal range, and uh, you're up at the top. A smooth shot from Paul there. That's that range, 20, 25 feet that we've seen him struggle, so be interesting putt to watch. Let's see if we can kind of get things going again. This looks a little straight. This is... Yeah, a little straight, little low. Doesn't quite have the finish on it, so that's going to be, well, eh, probably forty footer or so. Definitely a tester putt. Yeah, and everybody should be running these. It's there's really not that much danger. The decent bid, just a little low. Yeah, here's Harry, big putt here. Bang! Right on the stripe. Maybe that's what he needs to get that round going. Forty footer. Really a no doubter. Well, if you're not going to make the 25 footers, you might as well make the 40 footers. Another one, just Paul just does not look confident out of the hand. Like there's just no follow through. It's almost like Gannon Burr's putt last year where it just kind of, just kind of pops it and does not look smooth, but it worked that time. Just jabbing at it. And Zach continues, continues on the putting green. Yeah, I mean, that was a confident stroke, right? Just nice and smooth, good follow-through, yeah. shakes hands with the basket. That's what you want to see. Hole nine. This is a par five, 897 feet. This first shot, you can see the OB... Uh, all the long grass so you can land up to the right up top or you can kind of throw it down to the left most people are going to land up top and then you make a decision whether you want to go for the green i've seen it happen or you kind of lay up onto this hill and uh, then chip it up onto the green which is also surrounded by ob yeah, kind of a tricky little shape to this one Definitely decisions that need to be made. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how aggressive these guys get as they're in this tight battle. I think with the wind, the play is just to throw a hyzer on top of this hill. I don't think, I don't think anyone's really going to mess with it too much. This is pushing out a little bit too straight than I'm used to seeing, but it's safe and he's playing for the bird, which is yeah. perfect. Yeah, definitely very, still a very manageable birdie from there. Some people who have the arm, they can outdrive this hill and uh, really get down there for the eagle look. But I don't think we're going to see that from this card today. 
Yeah, no reason to really get too aggressive for any of these guys. Maybe Paul, if he wanted to, being two strokes back. But if you're Harry and Zach, this is this is one of those holes you don't want to give up strokes more than trying to to go out and get them. Right, and I like how this is pushing back left, and he'll be in a great spot. Good effort He's, there. Get left. A little wide from Craig, but that'll work just fine. They're all where you're supposed to be. So, Zach, you don't really need to let up here. You can let it rock. Um, there's a lot of room to the right, so I'm expecting a hyzer uh, just like this. And that was yeah, crushed. Yeah, a little bit of flip up, pushes nice and straight. That is a really great shot. Forehand digs nicely into that hillside to kind of minimize the ground play. Yeah, you know, there is OB. Uh, there's a parking lot up to the right. I don't really think these guys are thinking too much about that. This doesn't seem turned enough. Yeah, definitely fading out into the rough on the left-hand side. Yeah. It'll be That's, interesting to see what he's got from there. It, it feels like it's natural OB. It feels like he's going to have to pitch out, but maybe he can work something. And Craig, not much of a forehand guy, but he pulls out a good one there. Yeah, I was a little worried that might have been a little overturned out of the hand, but nice and stable disc fades back out at the end. I'll put him in a good spot. Now... Cru trying to crush it. Oh no. It just hops right into the bush. Yeah, maybe a questionable decision there from, from Harry. Trying to get aggressive. I don't know if he needed to. Well, you know, now he's battling he's battling Zach and he sees Zach's in a great position, so this was unreal. What just happened? Crazy scramble from Paul. Maybe he just fought through a lot of that rough on the left and just I mean, I've, ended up in a great spot. I don't, I've never, I've never been over there like that. So maybe there is a path. There has to be. But this, yeah, there is it. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little scary there. A little, a little deep, but stays in bounds. Yeah. And that's how you're used to seeing the whole plate: backhand, forehand, backhand. Have a putt. Yeah, Harry, Harry found the same. Just, yeah, fighting through. Kind of stalls out a little short, but he'll still have a long look. I mean, that's the range he likes right now, right? Yeah. Those 40-footers. Yeah, a little step-through putt. Here's Zach, best playing the group the best, or playing the hole the best out of the group. Just has a little chip forehand in, but it leaks long. Oh, oh. that's the danger. It's a downhill shot, and if you just let it up, yeah, just, out. just a little too much on it. Now he's left with this for the par. Yeah. There you Ooh, go. Just over the cage, able to connect. Not going to lose a stroke on Harry. Yeah, but that was a good opportunity to get a stroke. You know? Yeah, great opportunity with Harry 80 feet for his birdie and Zach with only maybe 200 or so in. Unfortunately, going to walk away with the par and Paul now just that one better. stroke back. Yeah. Did, yeah, didn't that putting stroke look a little bit more confident? Yeah, a little smoother, a little less yeah, stabby, like you said. Craig. Craig Craig's not happy with himself for this for this nine. He's uh, he he makes he's a way better putter than what he shows. He's a little off today. Just not quite feeling it. Doesn't have the confidence. But it's going to be a tight finish here. We got three players separated by just one stroke with nine holes to go here at the Minekill Disc Golf Championship. Should be a really exciting finish. Yeah, come back to see more putts like this. Killer putts from Harry Chase. Thank you to the Norse Gods as well as the Patreon family for supporting this coverage. We got nine holes to go. Don't go far. And we'll see how this tournament finishes out.